Hey guys, my name is Kenna and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a very highly requested skincare brand review. Now, I kind of avoided doing this because I thought that you guys might stop asking. Um, so you can obviously tell from the title, this is going to be the Kylie skincare review. The reason why I've held off from it is because, in my opinion, with celebrity skincare lines, um, like they are just the face of the brand and if you want to support that celebrity then you're probably going to purchase the products regardless of them being good or not um, and then if you actually want effective skincare you're probably not going to support a celebrity brand because often they're just more expensive because of the name so that's why i've held off from doing it for a while but you guys still keep asking me about it so i figured it's time um, you'll also notice my voice is kind of crap because I'm getting over a cold. That's why I haven't been posting the past few days. Um, if you followed me on Instagram, you would have known that. So just forgive my nasally voice. <laughs> I know it's a little bit rough, but we're just going to power on through today. And I just want to give a quick shout out to the organizers from um, the naturopathic college that I spoke at today. They gave me this really cute hoodie. It is so adorable and I'm so obsessed. You guys know I love breadfruit. All things breadfruit. So I was so honored when they presented me with that after my talk. So thank you guys so much to the Derm Club at the Canadian Naturopathic College in Toronto. All right, without further ado, let's just get right on into the Kylie skincare review. Okay, so I am going to be covering just the skincare facial products. I'm not going to be doing her new release of the body care products. If you do want to see me review that, just leave it down in the comments below. But this is just going to be the cleanse, tone, and moisturize steps of her routine. I am going to put the ingredients list right here for you guys to see what I have gone through and done and I have tried to figure out what that 1% line is. If you don't know what the 1% marker is, then I have a video all about it. I still have no idea which side it goes on. I'll do a card right here. Go check out that video. You'll have a little bit of insight on what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the 1% marker and kind of how I figure that out. Um, but just in brief, the 1% marker is essentially, there is a point in skincare ingredients lists where all of the ingredients are either at a concentration of 1% and less and they don't have to be in any specific order anymore. So typically ingredients list is order of highest concentration or least, but once you hit that 1% marker, then they can be in any order that they want. So what I have done here is I have done four dashes, forward slashes, dashes, forward slashes, whatever. I've done four forward slashes where I think the 1% um, marker is on each of these products, just so you have a little bit of insight on where those active ingredients are sitting. Okay, so to start things off, I'm going to be talking about the Walnut Face Scrub. Um, so some things that jump out for me here is that it's a physical exfoliant for the face. I actually would not recommend using um, any kind of uh, shell powder, be it walnut or apricot kernel shell powder. Even if they are very finely ground, they are actually sharp at the micro level. Um, they can cause microabrasions and tears in your skin, which can ultimately lead to infection and acne. Um, you might get away with doing this for a very long time without having any kind of negative effects. And if, especially if you have, you know, younger skin, youthful skin, you probably won't see any harmful effects for a very long time. Uh, but these micro tears are invisible to the naked eye, so it's really hard to know if you are doing damage to your skin. Um, the issue with this is when we massage our face with a scrub, we don't know how much pressure we're applying. We're applying different amounts of pressure in different areas. And again, those particles are um, sharp at the micro level. So really hard to say if it's going to be a safe product. Um, you might also notice I have put the 1% marker here right after polysorbate 60, right before the preservative phenoxyethanol, which means that everything after that is most likely at a concentration of less than 1%. So that would be all of your, you know, the oils, all of those plant extracts, etc. Okay, we're moving on to the foaming face wash. Now, as far as, um, you know, the actual cleansing power, it is a gentle cleanser. Uh, the ingredient, cocoa amidopropyl betaine, can be irritating to some people. Often it's not, though, but those other uh, detergents are gentle and totally fine. Um, they are coconut derivatives, though, so if you do have an allergy, just something to be cautious of. Often when... Um, coconut derivatives are processed into their new form they kind of lose their allergenicity but always something to be cautious of if you know that you actually do have a really strong coconut allergy 
Okay, and you will note here, I put the 1% marker right after glycerin, right before hydroxyacetophenone. Hydroxyacetophenone is often used as a fragrance and flavoring ingredient. Um, it's usually used at a pretty low concentration, which is why I would assume that's where the 1% marker exists in this product. Um, I will also mention that this product does contain fragrance and perfume, and the key ingredient, um, kiwi, kiwi seed oil, is again almost the last ingredient on this product list. Okay, next cleansing product, we are on to the makeup removing wipes. So for makeup removing wipes in general, I just want you to kind of think about if it's a necessary product in your routine. Um, they're very not eco-friendly from, you know, the fact that each wipe is disposable, but also the package that it comes in. If there's only 30 wipes, are you using one package every month? Just something to consider. Could you potentially use, you know, a makeup remover and a face cloth to do the same action? So I always um, just want to throw it out there that makeup wipes are not the most sustainable option as far as a way to remove your makeup, but that's, you know, that's not Kylie... Uh, Jenner specific that is just makeup wipes across the board, but I just wanted to throw that out there if you Really think it's super necessary. I totally understand it for travel if you're on an airplane or you know If you have kids and you need wipes for that reason um, But if you can get around not using makeup wipes, I think that it would be Just better for the planet <laughs> Okay, so with this one I did put the 1% marker right after polysorbate 20 um, so that's where that's where I think the 1% marker is, but it could also be after all of those plant extracts right after glycerin before tocopherol acetate. Tocopherol acetate is a vitamin E derivative. Often it's not used above 1%, so that's why that's probably the safest marker, but it does seem because of the amount of plant extracts in there, chances are they're at a concentration of less than 1% each. Um, so I would assume that the 1% marker is after polysorbate 20. Okay, so next we have the Vanilla Milk Toner. Uh, something I'm not clear on is what the pH of the toner is. I would love to know that it is properly pH balanced. Um, just something that I'd be curious in knowing. It does seem like the active ingredient more so in this product would be the Squalane. It is going to be um, a good emollient on the skin, not allowing your skin to dry out. I would put the 1% marker right after uh, Neopentyl Glycol Diethyl Hexanoate and before phenoxyethanol. Again, phenoxyethanol is a preservative that is often used at a concentration of 1% and less. So it's a pretty safe bet to say everything after that is going to be at a concentration of less than 1%. Um, some ingredients that I just want to point out. So sweet almond oil, if you have sensitive skin, um, if you have acne prone skin, you might want to avoid this ingredient altogether. Um, again, nut allergies, um, that would be something to look at. This toner also does have fragrance, so something to think about as well. And then again, the star ingredient of her skincare line, the kiwi seed oil, is the last ingredient on this list. Um, so we can be pretty safe to say that it is at a concentration of less than 1%. All right, moving right along, we have the vitamin C serum. Now, I'm going to assume that the 1% marker is right after glycerin, right before phenoxyethanol, again, the preservative that is often used at a concentration of 1% and less. Um, what I will note about this serum, it doesn't say how much um, of the actual vitamin C is present in the formulation. I would be curious to know that, to know how effective this product is going to be as far as a vitamin C product. Um, they do use a vitamin C derivative. It is an oil-soluble ester derivative called tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate. And the studies that prove its efficacy have only been paired with a retinol. Um, so it's a retinol product, and then they used 30% um, this vitamin C derivative, and they saw good results. The other study that was done with it um, uses a 10% ascorbic acid, so the water-soluble form that has a lot of clinical data behind it, and then 7% of this ingredient paired together and looked at the effects. So there's no human clinical trials that were done with just this derivative alone, so it's hard to say if it's going to be effective as a vitamin C brightening agent um, in this derivative form, but... Wow, I feel like I'm really powering through this. I don't know, I'm just like cutthroat today, you know? I feel like sometimes when I'm sick, I just get a little bit, a little bit intense. <laughs> don't mind me. Okay, so second last product, we are talking about the face moisturizer. So um, I'll just point out where I put that 1% marker. Again, it's right after um, the sweet almond oil, right before phenoxyethanol. So it's pretty safe to say that everything after that marker would be at a concentration of 1% and less. So that includes a lot of the plant extracts, the oils, the kiwi seed oil, vitamin E, aloe leaf juice. That's all going to be at a concentration of less than 1%. 
Um, this product does contain shea butter. I personally could not use shea butter on my face without um, it being a little bit too rich and clogging my pores. I have extremely acne prone, sensitive skin, and I have not had success using any products with shea butter on my face. So I would avoid this for that reason. It also does have uh, sweet almond oil in it. And sweet almond oil is just not the best for people that have sensitive and acne prone skin. Again, it's a bit of a heavier oil that tends to clog the pores. Okay, and last but not least, I can't believe I just powered through that so fast. This is like my shortest video ever, but the eye cream. Okay, so I'll just talk about the 1% marker. I placed this um, in two different spots. So there's a couple options here. It could be either after acetyl phosphate before polyacrylate 13, or it could be after isododecane and before phenoxyethanol. I mean, there's to only two ingredients in between. The reason why I'm not sure is isododecane. It can be used at a concentration of 1% and less, but it can also be used at a concentration of like 2 to 5% typically. So with that one, I'm not really sure. But again, we see the phenoxyethanol there, which is a preservative that is often used at a concentration of 1% and less. So this product, uh, it does have shea butter in it which again around my eye area i probably wouldn't put shea butter uh, a little bit too rich i have experienced milia so the kind of uh, built up skin cells under your skin the little white bumps that you can get under your eyes i have experienced that because of putting butters on my face so it's something that i would just personally avoid um, this does also include that vitamin C derivative, the tetrahexyl decal ascorbate, but it is below the 1% marker, so hard to say if it's going to be effective at a concentration of 1% and less, kind of just in there for marketing purposes. And then lastly, I do just want to point out that this product contains, contains titanium dioxide. Now, there's no reason for this to be in there except for they wanted the eye cream to be white. So it is a whitening agent for a formulation. It's a like a white mineral powder. Um, it does have some SPF, but not at this concentration. Uh, but titanium dioxide is a little bit, uh, it can clog your pores. It is a pretty heavy mineral, so it's not something that I would want in an eye cream that's around super delicate, gentle skin. And the only reason it's in this formulation is to make the formula white. I would rather have a colored or tinted cream um, that doesn't have titanium dioxide in it than have a perfectly white eye cream. So just something to think about as well. So my overall thoughts on this skincare line is it's kind of just a really basic skincare set. It's going to cleanse your skin. It's going to moisturize your skin. There is little to no anti-aging benefits here. There's nothing that really helps with pigmentation or redness or darkness. Um, unfortunately, most of the active potential active ingredients like those plant extracts and oils as well as some other actives are at a concentration of 1% and less. So it's really hard to say if they're gonna be effective at all at such a low concentration. I think with, you know, like I said in the beginning with celebrity skincare lines, if you are a diehard Kylie Jenner fan and you love the packaging and you wanna be, you know, in that vibe, then this is, it's not a bad skincare line. It's not gonna damage your skin. Is there gonna be any significant benefit? It's hard to say. But, you know, just do do what you want. If this is a line that you want because you want to support Kylie Jenner, then go for it. If you're looking to get more out of your skincare and you really are looking for targeted solutions to certain skin ailments, um, I probably wouldn't say that any one of these products is going to target any of that other than just cleansing your skin and moisturizing. If this is like your intro to skincare, honestly, it's probably fine. The only product I just wouldn't recommend that you use is the Walnut Face Scrub. Um, I know that she has said that, you know, it's it's milled super fine, the particles are super soft. Unfortunately, with those shells, even if they're milled super fine, they are still sharp at the micro level. It's hard to ever round them off effectively, consistently. And just with the motion of application, there's just so much different pressure and angles applied with that product to the skin. So. That's the only one that I would just say absolutely avoid. All the other ones are just like super basic skincare. Personally, I would have an issue with the shea butter and the sweet almond oil, but that's just me and my super sensitive acne prone skin. All right, so that is just my uh, quick thoughts and feels on the Kylie Jenner skincare line. Um, it's super nice to be back filming videos. Sorry again for my voice today, and I might have a few less videos coming out over the next few weeks just because I'm traveling a lot, but I'm going to have some fun like travel vlogs, and I'll keep answering your questions and everything. So as always, any additional questions, just leave them in the comments below. Any other skincare brands that you'd like me to do a review of, 
And again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please do subscribe to my channel. Um, we're building an awesome community of science babes, and I'd love for you to be a part of it. All right, thanks again for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay healthy, stay good, and I'll see you guys next time. Breadfruit. We want breadfruit, breadfruit. We want breadfruit, breadfruit. We want breadfruit, breadfruit. We want breadfruit, breadfruit. <laughs>